Imagine having the ability to put half of your code on some other thread in the browser and giving your main thread a little more space. But you might be wondering that JavaScript single threaded. And also you're not looking for a complicated solution like OMT, which is off the main thread. You don't want to introduce more web workers, which will put some of your code on some other thread and make your life easy. No, what are we left with now? Something that makes your app render faster. Number two, gets the job done. Optimizing is the ultimate go-to solution. So in this talk, I'm going to be talking about optimizing your application and making your not so performant app into a super performant application. So let's get started. My name is Nishu Goel and I work as an engineer at a company called The Data Works. Most of my work revolves around building application uh, around the web and the technologies that I use on a regular basis are React and Golang. So let's get started. So the first thing that a developer does when he has built his feature rich application is to go and check its performance. That's exactly what I did when I was done with my feature rich application. I went to Lighthouse, ran the audit on my application and checked the audit results. They were honestly not very pleasing. And the next thing that I did was go to web.dev, which not just measures your results of the audit using Lighthouse, but also gives you opportunities to improve those. Also gives you references to the guides that could help you to solve those issues. For example, it could be some unused JavaScript in your application that's blocking your render time. It could be some accessibility roles that you're not using properly. It could be some extra opportunities of adding, for example, code splitting in your application or inlining some fonts or CSS. That is all of the things that we are going to look at today and try to improve the rendering of our application. And I've kind of broken these into different categories for us to be able to understand it better and work towards it better. So let's discuss first of all, what are core web vitals? When we are looking to improve the uh, rendering of our application, these are the basic ideas that we should look at. One is loading. Number two is interactivity. And then we have visual stability. When we talk about loading, we want to make the loading of our application a bit faster. When we talk about interactivity, we want that when the user first interacts with the application, the browser should not take much time to respond to it. And then when we talk about visual stability, we want the user to be comfortable using the application. He doesn't want any surprises. He wants the app to be predictable. He wants to see that if there's a button placed over the right, he should be able to press that. And when he goes to press it, it should not jump anywhere, right? So things like these. Now, first of all, let's focus on loading and understand the terminology here. So when we talk about loading, there's a term called LCP, which is the largest contentful paint that comes into picture. And from the name, we can gather that it's something to do with the time that the application takes from the first load to the time when browser actually renders the DOM, when the browser actually shows you the content, right? Here, the good amount, the good score is around 2.5 seconds, which is a good score. But then if it goes more than four seconds, that's not a very good score. And if it goes more than that, there's definitely opportunity to improve the performance of your application. The second thing that comes into picture is FID. And this is to do with the interactivity of your application. This basically means that the user, when he interacted for the first time with the browser, uh, got the response in this much time. If it's around 100 milliseconds, it's quite good. But if it goes more than 300 milliseconds, that's not very user friendly. And again, we, we have opportunity to solve on our front end application. The last thing that we talk about is visual stability. And the term that comes into picture is cumulative layout shift. And this basically means that the user should not see any unexpected content, any content that was not statically there, was supposed to be there. Uh, and the good, good shift here is if it's a shift of like 0.1, but the bad being if it's more than 0.25. So we will look at some examples of CLS as well and try to improve those. Let's start with LCP, which is our major concern, as we saw in the, uh, the image that the first loading of your application is the very important factor. And the user should not have to wait for like 6.7 seconds for your application to load. 
And to do that, we need to unblock the render of our application and make it show up faster. We need to remove all the elements which are making our app get blocked from rendering for at least five seconds or so. So some of the things that we can do to improve this LCP for our application is maybe make the CSS load a bit later or just load it in line or just load it when the app has loaded. But you might be wondering that how will your application look without CSS? So that's what your critical CSS is. That's what is the CSS that you definitely need before the render of your application. And that's called critical CSS. So you would do two things here. Number one is to load, is to add the media element, which is equals to print and rest of the media, which is the CSS gets loaded only after the page has loaded. Now to get your uh, critical CSS, you can use libraries like critters, for example, which allow you to get the critical CSS for your application. And that can then be inlined in your uh, HTML file, for example, index.html. You can inline your critical CSS there and there you go. You download, you load the critical CSS for your application, which does not block your application from rendering and the rest of the CSS is loaded later on. That is one of the steps towards improving the LCP. The second thing that we could do is actually inline the fonts. We don't want to go to a CDN, make one request and then wait for this much to happen before our application actually renders. And what you could do instead is just download the font file that you need and inline this again in your index.html. This saves you one request to the CDN to get the fonts and makes it easier and faster for you to render your fonts, but inline. The next thing that you could do to improve the LCP is optimize your files. For example, you have a lot of images that you are using in your application. It could be in the directory structure, it could be coming from somewhere else, but all the files should be optimized. For example, for optimizing your images with the same quality, but the lesser size, you could use a library like ImageMin, which allows you to minimize your images, but keeping the same quality. Or to optimize your files, you could just use a CDN or you could use responsive images so that the application does not take so much to render, so much time to render. And you could also use newer formats for images. For example, you could use WebP, which is a smaller size and gives you good quality in that. That's about optimizing files. The next thing that we could do to improve the LCP of your application is preload the important resources. Any script, any resource that you want to uh, have before your render, you could simply preload it so that the browser gives it the priority and downloads it beforehand for your browser render. And it could be just by adding rel equals to preload that preloads the resources for you. The next thing that you could do to improve your LCP is lazy load the resources. We, we use a lot of image tags in our application. We use iframes for conditions where we want to render some media content. We use iframes there. Why not lazy load the iframes, which we know that are not going to be rendered just now? Why not lazy load the images that we know that are not going to be visible to the user just now? So you could simply use loading equals to lazy for that. And that again, saves you some time there. So the next thing that you could do is make your resources served adaptively, right? And that means that as per a particular user's connection, you ensure that for this particular connection, this is the right resource. For example, an image, an image of lower quality could be downloaded for a person with the network speed of, for example, 2G. But then um, if, a, so if a server has a good network speed around 4G or more, uh, you could give a better quality content there. So this is called serve, uh, adaptively serving and you could check the connection by using navigator.connection dot whatever the effective type is and accordingly serve the resource to the user. So this is again a very thoughtful way of increasing your LCP and also making things user friendly. So these are the different actions towards your better LCP, towards your better performance which might not bring the number from 6.7 to 2, but it will definitely bring it to 3 or 4. So these are the different steps that you take towards the LCP. Let's look at the interactivity bit now, where you want to improve the first input delay of your application. The idea here is to make your page interaction ready and help it respond quicker. So let's see what are the different ways to improve the FID of our application. Number one is to defer some unused JavaScript. 
to work towards the LCP, we would deferring some unused CSS or inlining the CSS. In case of FID, we can get rid of the JavaScript that we don't need. And there are different ways to do it. You could use code splitting in your application, which is just creating a bundle out of some unnecessary JavaScript or some JavaScript that you need a, a bit later or some complex code that you know that is only required later on at a particular stage. Such bundles could be loaded on demand or later on. That is what code splitting is. And React is a good example here, which supports it by default. So you could import lazy from the React library and that would allow you to import any module lazily. And the second thing that you could do is you could use async and defer. When you use defer and async, it would load the resources in parallel but when you're using defer, the idea is to load them in parallel, but also give priority to the scripts that might be needed before. Now, the second thing that you could do to improve the FID of the application is minimize the unused polyfills. For example, there's a browser that's a modern browser and it does not need some of the polyfills. It should not have to wait for it to download. It should not have to download it at all when it doesn't need that particular polyfill. So we can minimize that usage by using type equals module or no module. When you've selected type equals module, the browsers, the older browsers, which know that they need some polyfills, will not look at a particular script with type equals module and load all the scripts which they need, which is the no module scripts. And if it's a modern browser, it will only look at the scripts which are with the type equals module and download those. It does not need to have the scripts which are only for the older browsers. So that way you could minimize a lot of downloading of your polyfills. Now let's look at the CLS of your application. You have to improve the layout shift of your application, which should not be more than 0.25 because that's not a very good user experience. And the idea is to ensure that your page does not jump, does not behave unpredictably and just pleases the user's eye, just makes it comfortable for the user to work on your application. The, the, the ways that you can improve your CLS, the layout shift can be to give dimensions to your images or any video resources that you have in your application so that they don't jump as per different screen sizes. They don't jump when you're using a large screen, large wide screen, and they don't jump if you're using a phone small screen, right? And this applies to iframes or any media resources. The second thing that could help you work towards the CLS is the dynamic content should load only when the user is expecting it, only when the user asks for it. For example, the user clicks on a button and that's when he's expecting a payment pop-up, for example, right? That's when it should be appearing. It should not appear when the user, for example, is able to place an order and suddenly he sees a pop-up and by mistake he cancels the order, right? That is not a user-friendly approach at all. So that helps you improve the CLS of your application. Now let's talk about regrets and finalizers. This is a recent addition to JavaScript and has some interesting stuff. So think of a scenario where you want an object reference to be there inside the application, but you don't want to keep it in the memory. You don't want the memory to be bloated because of the, the reference that you have in the memory, right? So that's what a weak reference is. You want a reference should be there to an object, but it should not stay in the memory. The garbage collection should wipe it out. That's what a weak reference is. But now you might be wondering, how do you know if the garbage collector has actually wiped it out? How do you know if the reference is actually available later on? That's what finalizers are for. They help you in the development process. They help you to understand if the garbage collector has actually wiped it out, the, the reference that you need it, and if it's available at a later stage. That's what finalizers help you with. That's, they give you some logging information. It's not for fraud. It's only for the development stage and making your life as a developer easier. So that's about VGREFs and finalizers. I've written a blog about the, the proposal of VGREF and finalizer and how it works. You can read more about it inside here, or you could go to the TC39 proposals and look at different proposals to JavaScript for the year 2021. So I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover. I have covered all of these activities that we looked at towards improving the FCP, LCP, FCP being the first contentful paint, LCP being the largest contentful paint, and the FID, which is the first input delay of the user interaction. And finally, the cumulative layout shift, which is for your overall page layout, right? 
So all of these things have been covered in the code lab that I've shared here, which is bit.ly slash dear performant app. And I take it from the state where my application score was 6.7 seconds to load the first render to a better stage where it could be at least around two seconds to three seconds, but not more than that. Right. So that's all of the things covered in this code lab. And I'm sure you will gain a lot of things from there. And finally, I would like to thank you all for listening to me. And I hope that when you go back home today, you're curious to check the Lighthouse score of your applications and work towards improving that. All the best. Thank you very much. Hey, it's Joe Eames with ng-conf. If you like that video, be sure to click subscribe either here or here, somewhere over here. And if you're looking for something more, here's another video for you to watch here or there or somewhere.